Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to another video. I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, we are looking at Visa. Visa is one of the stocks that I own in my portfolio and it has been beaten up honestly in the last few months, okay? Since the beginning of the year, so now, not the beginning of the year, last six months is down about 12% and year to date is down almost 11%. So since January up until now, it went up as high as $235 per share. And right now it's just below 200. Now I do own the stock. Um, I just want to see today after this pullback, if it's again, is undervalued or overvalued, is fairly valued. We want to check it out. We want to check out the financials. But before I start doing this, okay, I want to make sure that everyone understands because I get a lot of questions about Visa and MasterCard. These companies do not handle anything to do with interest and all that stuff. They create the technology behind the card. So the technology that allows companies and people to transact, okay? So the banks will ask Visa to basically give them the technology and the card to then give it to you and then they make sure once you get your money into the account, they transfer it over. So they basically facilitate, they facilitate in all of this happening, but they have nothing to do with the day. Like they don't deal with any interest. They don't actually handle any money um, if you like. They just have the technology behind the, how the card works. And that's all it is, okay? So we'll look at the fin fundamentals um, in a second, but I just wanted to make that clear. It's Sharia compliant because it has nothing to do with interest. So that is all they do. Um, and they have, like I said, they have nothing to do with the interest side of things. And that's why it's Sharia compliant. So let's have a look in, in terms of, so we now now basically the stock is actually down quite a bit. So about 11% since the beginning of the year, we want to see basically what that means. And just let's talk about the business generally, okay? As you can see from 2019 to 2021, what you see here is the total volume, including payment and cash volume. Um, this is basically how many transactions, basically how much they've transacted between God knows how many com companies and businesses, okay? So 11.6 to 11.3, um, that's trillion by the way, to $13 trillion in 2021. That's huge. Think about this. That is honestly, that is huge. And this is one of the reasons why they've been one of the biggest companies out there. And uh, one of the biggest, um, one of the, you know, in terms of growth side of it, they are always growing because they have a ma major, major customer base. And, you know, none of us, look at your pocket, look at your wallet. I always say this, look at your wallet. How many cars have you got? How many of them actually has that visa sign? Okay. And that's all you need to think about. So il they basically transact in 11, sorry, $13 trillion a year. And that's huge. You know, they get cut every time they do one of those transactions. So obviously they made a deal with the banks. They deal me made a deal with whoever and issues your card and so on. And obviously they get their cut. And that's how they make their money. So they have nothing to do with in terms of the ins and outs of each um, transaction. Right. So just to show you some of the data from um, this year, so 2021, as you, from last year, sorry. Net revenue of $24.1 billion. That's up about 10%. Gap net income of $12.3 billion, a non gap of $12.9 billion, payment volume of $10.4 trillion, which is absolutely huge if you think about it. Process of transactions, okay, look at that. Oh my days, this is madness, okay. And then they basically paid dividends and shares buyback, they spent $11.5 billion, okay, and that's up 7% from the prior year. And this is one of the reasons I love these companies that I invest in because not only are they paying you dividends, although their dividends are quite small, and I don't mind because they are growth business, but also they are buying back their shares, okay? So $11.5 billion, that's the money they return to you and me as an investor because when they buy back, um, you know, buy back their shares, what happens? Your one share is now worth more. Okay, when companies dilute your shares, then that means you actually lose it. Your shares are no longer worth what they were worth before. Okay, and it's great. So they hire, they basically um, employ, they, they have massive employees around the world. This is probably one of the biggest companies out there. And I would not be surprised if it continues to do well in the next at least five to 10 years. Okay, we talk about Bitcoin and all that stuff. Yes, it's involved in Bitcoin and all of these things. But main thing for me is these transactions. Main things for me is that 
what they're already doing and not what they're about to do in the next couple of years. Let's have a look at their financials overall. And like I said before, it's the largest payment processor in the world, okay? It processed over $10 trillion last year, like we already said. It operates over 200 countries and processes transactions in over 160 um, currencies, which is absolutely brilliant. It's currently trading $197 per share. P is quite high, okay? The current sector is about 25. So the technology sector is currently about 25. But when you look at the PE is 39, it's slightly high. EPS is $5. A market cap of $416 billion. It has a white mode. That means basically the company has a competitive advantage over their competitors. Annual dividend yield of just about below one. Five-year growth rate of 11%. And they grow this massively. Every year they grow it about four or five um, to fifteen percent ten percent which is amazing and they have been growing their dividends over the last 14 years payout ratio very small only 40 and uh, only 22 percent sorry dividend safety of 99 percent that is the highest according to simply um, safe dividend and they have 15 billion dollars in the bank to buy back shares to do all sorts of things they want the beta right now is a buff one which is fine current ratio um, which is basically is, means that's not that volatile current ratio of 1.39 okay and that's fine so there's a buff one which is fine um, look at this profit margin right 52 percent profit margin return on equity 36 percent and then quarterly revenue growth is 24 percent quarterly earnings growth is 27 percent and they expect it, analysts are expecting this business to the earnings to grow um, 18% in the next five years. So every single year in the next five years, they expect they ex expecting it. They are expecting it to grow it to about 18%. Okay, which is really good. And valuation in terms of simply Wall Street is currently about 22% um, um, below where it's supposed to be. So undervalued at the moment. The price target is 255. Currently trading and below 197, I think it was. And then it's definitely strong buy from me. That's what I think. I don't know what you think, but that's for me. It's a buy, okay. And when you look at the Morning Star, which, um, which is quite conservative when it comes to this sort of thing, and I like to use it them because it gives you ex like that, you know, margin of safety. They say at least the temp this 10 percent discounted at the moment, and I think it's four star. If we quickly look at that, there we go. It's four star at the moment. That means basically it is. And obviously, this 10% discounted, which is basically what I said here. And then tip ranks, uh, they're saying about 38% upside and $273 um, per share. That's where they think the price should be at the end of this year. Okay, all these prices, by the way, they're basically target for the end of the year. Um, because that's what analysts look for. They don't think about 10 years from now. And they're thinking about just the end of the year. Because for them, that's what they have to do, okay, to make money. Now, in terms of my concerns the my only concern was the pe but when you compare it with the market when you compare it companies like um companies like mastercard for example this is quite normal and the reason i said it's quite normal is because when you look at this website called macro um trends it's actually quite a useful website to look at ep um, earnings um pe's and things like that um any to be honest with you any um uh, metrics so when you look at the since 2020 Okay, it's always been about so they about 30s, then in mid 20s, and then it went up all the way to 85. So that was when it really overvalued 2012. Then it came back down to 56, and then since 2014, it's been trading about in that mid 20s, just above 28, 29, 35. Then it's gone up to 47. Then it came back down again and then in 2020 it went up as high as 52 and right now it's about 36 so 36 37 whatever it is at the moment okay and this is normal for visa so when you have to when you're thinking about pe's like we always say pe ratios are great but you have to compare it with the historic pe for that stock at the same time you have to look at the other companies okay so if you look at mastercard it'll probably be around the same as well so just to show you, this is a MasterCard as well, okay, PE ratio. So if you scroll down again, you can see um, about 20, so 2010, it was about 21. It went down actually quite, it was quite cheap at some point. It was 15, 
then it gone up to about 31 it's going kind of about in mid 20s um, mid 30s 40s then about 2020 that drop happened it went to down up to up to 30 and then from there onwards it's been going up right now is looking at about 37 so yeah visa is not expensive in comparison to the mark basically overall sector um is not all basically as expensive as the others but it is a little bit expensive that's the only reason i will hold back but having said that because i'm obviously under at the moment okay if you look at the visa here i am actually down quite a bit about five percent right now i might be i might start adding um if it keeps going down i might start adding a couple of more shares in the next couple of weeks and see how that goes um but yeah it's one of the companies that i've had um for a while i definitely want to keep it i definitely want to add to it um, i like the business model i like where the margins i like the fact that it's discounted it's right now five star it's got a wide mode um, and then when you look at companies like uh, Monus Future Growth in terms of their future growth, according to Simply Wall Street, you're looking about 12 percent. Um, when you look at their um, safety of dividends wise, 99 um, percent. So, again, it's really great business and I like it. And yeah, I'm going to add to it and see what happens. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do kind of enjoy these type of videos, please, please, please. All I ask for is. Just like the videos because it takes a lot of time and effort like i've always said to put these things together so i would really appreciate if you can give the like button thank you very much assalamu alaikum enjoy your weekend assalamu alaikum